Hello everyone, this is Felix from GM Wall. In my last video, we looked at how we could use height maps to create a 3D terrain. If you have not yet followed this tutorial, I strongly recommend you go check it out. Today, we are building upon the project we created last time and implementing lighting. Again, before we start coding, let's have a look at how we are going to do this. The first step in lighting our mesh is to define our light. In this example, we will be looking at using a directional lamp which is by far the easiest light to implement after ambient light. A directional lamp is very good at simulating the light coming from very far away objects, such as the sun, making it perfect to light our terrain. This light source type also has the advantage of being very efficient both in terms of performance and memory usage. Directional lights are quite easy to define as they can be represented by a 3D vector. The next step is to calculate how much of the light hits the terrain at different points. For this tutorial, we will look at per-phase lighting as it is the easiest to understand and implement. With per-phase lighting, we calculate the amount of light hitting the terrain for each face, rather than each vertex or each pixel. This greatly improves the performance, but does reduce the accuracy of the lighting. This method requires to get the normals of the face. A normal vector is a vector perpendicular to the face of the mesh, making it very useful when calculating lighting as it can be compared with the light vector to get how much light falls into that face. To get our normal vector, we will be using a cross product. Finally, once we have both our light vector and our normal vector, we can use a dot product to project our lighting onto our face and obtain how much light is hitting the face. We can then pass this information into our mesh as a color. Now that we have the theory out of the way, let's have a look at the code required to get this to work. We will first open up our terrain object, where all our lighting will be done, and open our code in the create event. We will be using our vertex color to represent our calculated lighting, so we add it to our list of data types in our vertex format using vertex format add color. Next, we define our light vector. We will create three new variables called light x, light y, and light z and we set them to 0, 0 0.5 and 1 respectively. This will represent the direction of our light. In order for our lighting to be calculated correctly, we will need our light vector to be normalized, that is, to have a length of 1. To do so, we will first find the vector length using Pythagoras, and then divide each component by the length. The next step is calculating our face normals. To do so, we will first have to look at cross products. Here are the standard equations to find the x, y and z components of a normal vector where n is normal vector and u and v are the adjacent sides of the face you are obtaining normals from. Because we are working with an axis aligned square grid, we can already substitute a couple values in. After some simplifying, we obtain the equation we will use. So let's open up our terrain draw event and scroll down to just after we calculated the texture coordinates. We use our equation to calculate our cross product. Again, we need to normalize our vector for it to be usable later on and so we use the same technique of dividing our vector by its length to normalize it. Now we have to calculate the dot product. Thankfully, GM has a built-in function for that called dot product 3D. We pass in both our normal vector and our light vector. This will calculate the cosine of the angle between the two vectors, which represents how much of the light hits the surface. To convert this value into a color, we will use make color RGB and pass in our dot product multiplied by 255. We do so as the dot product will have a range of minus 1 to plus 1, while the function make color RGB has a range of 255. Finally, we scroll down to where we defined our triangles and add vertex color to every vertex we defined. And this is it for this tutorial. If you now launch the game, you should be able to see the same terrain as before, but lit from one side. Next time, we'll look at how we can apply different textures to our terrain based on the height and gradients. So if you would like to see that, please like this video.